Hey guys, Henning and Morten from FlipMongols here. In this video, we're going to talk about why it's absolutely essential to add symmetry to your sculpts in ZBrush. Before that, make sure to uh, subscribe and hit the little notification bell as well. When you are sculpting in ZBrush, it's, it's really easy to forget about symmetry. And it's also, it's really easy to forget about why you're adding symmetry. If you're looking at any person in real life or, you know, at any animal, whatever it might be, they might appear to be symmetrical, but in reality, they're not. They're nowhere near symmetrical. We can see this here, an example where now we have the model here. This is from our newly released introduction to ZBrush 2020, where we go through how to sculpt this character. And here you can see it looks... It looks fine, but it looks it's at lacking a bit of life. And the reason is because this is 100% symmetrical. So here we can see an example where we do have asymmetry added. Particularly if you look at his eyes and go between them, you can just see that there is just something more interesting in it. It's not this facial expression here is the best facial expression in the world or anything, but there is just a little bit of, there's more of a hint of a character instead of just a dead soul <laughs> staring into the abyss. So we are just going to take a quick sculpting demo and show you how we would actually break symmetry up. You you shouldn't just go crazy. There are some things you should really keep in mind. This wasn't really something that I guess resonated with me until I started looking at scans of people, especially in VFX where we get a lot of actors and actresses in like for scans. You you have scans of their faces and you you think, you know, in the right in the lighting, you know, wearing makeup and whatever. It's always like, oh, okay, it's a perfectly symmetrical face, but you're actually be quite surprised how asymmetrical everyone's faces are yeah you can do a simple exercise here in like neutral lighting you can take a photo of yourself and then flip it left to right and this can look like almost two different people you might regret the results though <laughs> yeah you might <laughs> so the what we're going to be doing now is just adding some basic asymmetry to it the thing is whenever you're doing at least a production model you want to be careful with adding too much as well you want them to be at least for these kind of models to be symmetrical for, from a topological point of view. You want your UVs to be symmetrical and you don't want anything too crazy going on. If you're doing like sculpts for just the sake of doing sculpts for concept sculpt, whatever it might be, you know, go crazy. But particularly if you are dealing with production, it's very important that your model stays symmetrical and that the asymmetry might be more like smaller details or, you know, something which doesn't mean they have to rig both sides of the face or you have to retope both sides of the face. Yeah, usually this is something you probably handle in a blend uh, in a blend shape, so you can have it after the fact. So you're sculpting something, they can rig it, paint their weights, everyone can do their texturing and whatever the groom as well UVs, and then you apply it as a blend shape later on to create the asymmetry. But everything else then still, you know, remains. So enough talk, let's sculpt. <laughs> so now what we, what I will be doing is I would go into low subdivision level, and then I would I would try to just change something when it comes to the mouth, give him like a little snarl, like whatever it might be. This is where you should really have a mirror in front of you because that's going to improve it tremendously. Obviously, I can't do that because I have a giant microphone in my face right now. <laughs> that makes it a bit harder. But you can just experiment and see like just how much it changes if you just drag it to one side or the other one. Like it, it just has a massive impact on a face right away. If you were to do something like this to it, how does this change the face? How does this change the face? Now he's super angry and his nose is melted. It's pretty. It's good to be pretty liberal with this, especially if you're doing a cave troll, you know. But there's also there's also different kinds of, I guess, uh, intensities of of asymmetry. So if you're doing something like a person, you probably wouldn't want to fuck them up this bad. Like you have to look at yourself and references and figure out, okay, what are the common sort of asymmetries that happen? Maybe it's you know the the bridge of the nose is like half, maybe to a quarter of a centimeter to one side. Maybe one eye is just like half a centimeter further up than the other. The the symmetry within a person's face is actually quite subtle, so it has to look subtle as well, but it still has to be enough there to to register without it's like it's subconsciously registering it like it still has to look symmetrical but when you look at it in perfect symmetry it turns out it's not symmetrical we can also do it to the other sub tools as well like now here we have uh, the gums and i just really want to make sure that we have some variation in the gums some variation in teeth uh, we can use move uh topological for this and just really just add some asymmetry here. I, I really prefer to do this. Like it, maybe you can remove one tooth. It can still be topological the same. You just move it up. <laughs> so you can't, you can't see it. 
Uh, one thing to note in Seabridge as well is that symmetry is subtool dependent. So if you, there is no global symmetry, if you, you enable symmetry on this subtool and disable it on the, other, on, on the other, it's going to remember those settings, which is both awesome and terrible because it means that you might work without symmetry for like two hours because you thought you enable it, but it was only enabled on the other one. And then you hate your life. <laughs> and then you hate your life. <laughs> well, you can see, right, how much variation you can get just by using the move brush and just just adding like some different length of teeth. You can add a little cut to it, whatever it might be. You just get a lot more character from here compared to uh, uh, like uh, this right away. Like it just, it just has a lot more personality right away, like within a few minutes. Like you spend a few weeks or at least a few days sculpting up a character like this and then you're adding so much life into it within, you know, within a few minutes of sculpting. You can go into the other subtools as well, and we can uh, we can add some variation to the eyes. It's really interesting what happens when you start to rotate the eyes around like this. They can look really dorky or really scary, like just within a few rotation degrees here. Then I also prefer to add some symmetry to uh, to the middle of the face as well, like actually sculpting something up. Yeah, like that's one of those like quick fixes i guess when it comes to asymmetry is like if you break the center line especially if you have like in this sculpt where we have a ridge going down the center line perfectly in the center line breaking that one up just you know just gives you so much for free and it's probably one of the fastest ways to break up the symmetry i also prefer to add uh, between the subtools as well so maybe this guy here has been you need you need a scar on his mouth here because you know you just need that so he's been sliced here and then he's been sliced here as well so it just keeps going between them and maybe like maybe this broke off a part of his tooth whatever it might be it, it just adds a bit more uh, realism to it uh, where, where it's not just a slice which only affected his top lip but not anything else <laughs> you can even see here we have a little slice on his eye as well because he's been in battle yeah he got messed up he's been in like cave fight club cave troll fight club <laughs> So now you can see, like, just by having this, it's like a massive, massive amount of asymmetry right away. But it's still a good idea to sculpt the vast majority of it with symmetry on, because that just means it's so much faster to sculpt it. Yeah, it's like the asymmetry, most of the time, you want to consider it as, it's kind of like a final detailing step. There are instances where that you, that isn't, like, the case, right? Let's say... Uh, two face, like half his face is just burnt <laughs> off. Okay, that one is a little more. That's one. That Fair one's point. a little tougher, right? So you can't do it there. But even if it's more, like, like gouged scars or something like that on one side of the face or one side of the body, sometimes you would maybe be able to get away with it in in a blend shape. Uh, probably not. <laughs> but so for that area, you might have you know bespoke topology, but just in that area where you want to cover that. It's really interesting spending a few hours on it. Obviously, this is done real time and we're not spending a few hours on it. But if you really do, you can re really perfect it so that each side is truly unique. And it's one of these things that you might not logically be able to tell, but you can feel it. If you were to see a person in real life who was perfectly symmetrical, it would look like a mannequin where like there's something off about this person. There's something unsettling about it. So just adding some asymmetry can do wonders. It also, it also allows you to add more story into your model as well, because now you got to think about why is he so asymmetry low, asymmetrical? Did he have like a cave troll stroke or something? Like, is one side like super lopsided? Is it like hanging down? You know, like you can do so many things with with this face like this. Yeah, and, and like common common ones, if you want to talk more about people again, it's like you would often have the jaw like the, the two points of the jaw where the sternocleidomastoid sort of uh, attaches you know they would probably be offset one will be up higher one will be down lower maybe the jaw is offset to the side a little bit as well mm -hmm. you can have a over and under bite there's that kind of asymmetry as well like i mentioned the bridge of the nose the position of the ears like they're very rarely at the same level that's why when people go into get glasses made oftentimes you know they'll have to adjust them to just make sure that they're actually level with with your with your eyes just because your ears tend to sit a little differently in the face and the same thing goes for the eyes yeah, what you can also do is you can be a bit cheeky and we can start to just post this entire character. We can start to do something like this. We can blur the mask. I've set up a custom hotkey for that, which is the X key. And then I am just rotating around and just 
moving it into place a little. This is just so that you get a bit more posture in it. You can see just how much more interesting it becomes the moment you have something like this. It's just so much more actionable, like right away. This isn't even like a great post. This is just me rotating it like a few degrees here and there. But already, like it looks like he's way more in action. Like compare this guy already now to the other version here where we have, uh, which is perfectly symmetrical. Like compare these two, it's just it's just so much more interesting what's being done on the left here compared to the right. And this is also why we all we emphasize sculpting the shoulder area as well and part of the neck when we do busts, just because it gives you more area to play with. You know, you can shrug on one shoulder, you get this this rotation in there as well. So it just it just allows you to bring a little more emotion into the character than what they would be able to just express with their with their face alone. But please, for the love of God, if you do this and you're working in a production or a freelance <laughs> and whatever, do <laughs> don't do this. At least get it sanctioned before doing this. Because otherwise, some rigor is going to run through the office and like stab you with his fork. Because uh, this is going to be very painful. If you give this to a rigor as a, as, a head, as a head model, he will be like, what the hell are you doing? Go back to your desk. <laughs> Go back to your desk. And you've been banned from touching polygons for a week. But it really, it really adds a lot of uh, a lot of life to it. Like if, if I was doing this as a concept, now I could I could like start to paint in some spit going out, and I could really make his eyes super crazy. And there's so many things you can do with this. This this video here is really about just think that asymmetry is a thing. We just want you to add that to your checklist of things you do when you're sculpting, because you can really easily just add so much more life into your characters. So yeah, we really hope you liked this video. Super quick one, just going in, messing this guy up a little bit. If you'd like to see these kind of more of these videos in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and also hit the little notification bell as well. And um, yeah, also post your sculpts if you've done any cool, any asymmetrical sculpts in the comments as well. We'd love to see that. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.